Uh, I will be your moderator for uh, this this morning. My name is Vanya Figenwald. I'm a journalist with Leader Business Weekly in Zagreb. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, we have quite a lot of time, so you don't have to brace yourselves. You can just uh, let it rip, you know, just be as detailed as you like. And uh, I'll try not to keep us slaves to time. So once we're done, we're done. We have, I think, around 50 questions to go through. I should also warn you that we are at this point, the way I see it, missing a uh, representative from Croatia's energy company. He's having some problems with, with his PC. So we'll have to skip him, skip him for the time being. I hope he, he joins us at some point when, uh, when he fixes his PC. I also think I'm missing our Kristina Celic from the Ministry of Economy. I don't see her here. She is here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. Well, I think that's mostly most of us. Uh, I would like to now give the floor to Ambassador uh, Chaba Cemjak. I hope I, I pronounced it at least somewhat right. Uh, he will Almost. give you the introduction speech. Okay. Sorry. Uh, give you the introduction speech, and then we'll begin the uh, the discussion. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. State Secretary, Mr. President, uh, Madam Special Advisor, Consultant, Madam and, and Mr. Directors, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, welcome to the online roundtable discussion entitled Climate Friendly Neighbors, Hungary and Croatia and Cooperation in the Electricity and Gas Sector. I'm confident that today's meeting, even though due to the epidemic situation, we have to organize it in online format contributes uh, to a substantive discussion of further possibilities for the already excellent cooperation between Hungary and Croatia in the field of energy sector. Economic and trade cooperation plays an important role in the relations between Hungary and Croatia. In the first eight months of this year, Hungary was Croatia's fourth most important trading partner, accounting almost 8% uh, of Croatia's total trade. Our interdependence in energy is well illustrated by the fact that uh, the volume of energy commodities in our ever-growing bilateral trade turnover is increasing year by year. Our trade turnover in this area has increased by 55% in the last five years. Both countries are committed to ensure a secure and predictable future for their citizens. One of the most sensitive areas in this regard is energy security. The current situation in the energy market also shows the importance of closer cooperation between our countries. With the long-term gas agreement in October, Hungary has successfully secured natural gas supplies for the next 15 years, while Croatia, with the construction of, and commissioning of the LNG terminal in Kirk, put itself on the energy security map of Europe. This has increased the energy security as well as the possibility for energy procurement diversification, not only for Hungary, but also for the whole Central and Eastern Europe, as the source of the gas provided by LNG offers a real alternative of natural gas procurement, in addition to uh, Russian pipeline natural gas import. It is important to stress that Hungary is already to strengthen cooperation with Croatia, also in the field of electricity trade, MVM has been present in Croatia through its subsidiary since uh, 2011. The proof of the company's success is that MVM is constantly looking for new business and 
procurement opportunities and became a member of the Croatian Power Exchange. As far as further development of bilateral cooperation is concerned, Hungary, following the completion of the Pax 2 project, is ready to sell electricity to Croatia from its new source as well. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to hear thanks uh, to NVM for its sponsorship that enabled today's event to take place. I would like to thank you once again for accepting our invitation to this event. I sincerely hope that uh, the conference will be a success and will provide all of you with a range of important information. Wishing you a good and successful discussion. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Mr. Ambassador. Okay, so it's over to me now. And uh, I'd like to start with what, uh, well, in some way we'd, we could call our guests from, from Hungary. I would like to give the first uh, question to Mr. Attila Steiner from uh, Hungary's mega ministry, which encompasses different areas of, of development, uh, circular economy, uh, energy, climate policy, innovation, technology, and so on. And uh, the first question would be, uh, uh, what are some of the key challenges for Europe's energy market now? We've seen a lot of turbulence in, in uh, the European energy market. We've seen prices rise. Uh, we've seen shortages of supply. We've seen certain geopolitical games between uh, Western Europe and Russia. So what's the overall situation in, in Europe as far as energy goes at this point? It doesn't seem very promising for many countries. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. You're good. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Ambassador to organize this uh, event. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, neighbors coordinate uh, extensively since uh, energy markets are, are very much uh, interconnected. And, and of course, uh, government policies play a very important role. But in order to fulfill our commitments and goals on a European level, I think it's very important to consider the regional specificities and, and to cooperate with, with neighboring countries. And uh, this is an ex excellent opportunity for that. As you mentioned, uh, uh, I work in the Innovation and Technology Ministry, which is a giga ministry, but uh, it's very advantageous on, from one perspective, uh, this setup that um, uh, we have in one house uh, many, many policies and many, many projects which help to implement and to fulfill uh, uh, our commitments. Because I think this is the biggest challenge. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, climate change happens and uh, we have the climate neutrality objective now supported by all of the EU leaders and all member states. But of course, the key question how we will implement uh, that policies and uh, you know without the execution of projects without mobilizing funds uh, it will be very hard and therefore it's quite advantageous that we have many fields which can contribute uh, to climate neutrality in one house and it, it helps us to coordinate uh, better so as i mentioned the uh, implementability i think that will be the key question for for the next uh, years and uh, of course, uh, it was a big step to agree on the uh, main goals. I think that's uh, a very important step, which, which was not obvious uh, at the beginning of the last decade. Uh, so now we know what to achieve. And the key question will be how to achieve. And here there are some differences in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, among uh, European countries. And I think uh, one important thing is that uh, what is uh, the main objective to be climate neutral by 2050 this is very important uh, but how you consider the technical limitations and how you consider the ad other important aspects of energy policy like affordability energy supply security and and how you you can uh, fulfill all of those criteria when you plan the new measures i think here we have some uh, quite big differences in the views of different uh, member states. And here, I think our region has a very important role uh, that uh, for us, affordability and energy supply security is very important. And we shouldn't forget about those aspects if we are 
talking about green transition. And um, here the Visegrad for cooperation uh, with the support of other regional countries like Croatia, R Romania, Bulgaria. I think this is very important because finally we have to implement somehow those policies which, which, which will cost and which need uh, huge investments. And uh, in order to be uh, realistic on that, I think we, we should have a clear uh, coordinated uh, voice. So this is one uh, big question. Uh, the second big question is how to maintain uh, the competitiveness of our industries while uh, be being also ambitious on the climate side. I think this is a very important question. And here the state aid rules and, and also how the future ETS system should look like or how the environmental standards should uh, look like. I think this is a crucial, crucial question. And here we are also very closely cooperating in the region. And I think we should also uh, uh, increase uh, the intensity of that cooperation to be able to be successful at, at, at the end. Uh, yes, and, and of course, um, there are also new uh, challenges and new technologies uh, where I see quite a big potential uh, for regional cooperation, uh, like hydrogen or uh, like CCS technologies or battery technologies. Uh, and, and of course, economies of scale will matter. And I think we should also consider this green transition as, as an industrial opportunity also to establish and to have strong positions in the green industry. And here, a regional approach uh, could be also very important. And finally, let me highlight one uh, aspect that uh, I think uh, the whole region progressed quite a lot in terms of uh, interconnectivity and infrastructure questions which was not the situation like 10, 15 years ago. I can still remember the 2009 gas crisis, which uh, hit us uh, very unex unexpectedly. And at, th at that time, uh, we used to have already some underground gas storages with quite significant capacity, uh, but we couldn't provide help to neighboring countries because there was no interconnector to, to the neighboring countries. And, Fortunately, now the situation, situation is much, much better. So I think this is a big achievement of the region that actually the interconnectivity also in gas and electricity uh, increased significantly. And that makes our region more, uh, more uh, uh, resilient to, to any shocks uh, which, which will occur uh, in, 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 in the future. And uh, now we have a much, much better situation uh, than it was 10 years ago. So I would like to congratulate every, everybody who uh, uh, was involved into that, because I think this is a big achievement that we shouldn't hide and we should talk about that, that achievement because it's, it's quite a big progress. Thank you. Thank you. You've really touched upon almost all of the uh, subjects that we have in front of us today. Uh, at the panel, uh, I'd like to ask you two things now have come up, which are very interesting. You mentioned interconnectivity, which is good. But what we are experiencing in Europe now is our connectivity, and this varies from member state to member state, to the suppliers. Now, we don't all have the same access to suppliers, for example, of gas, which is the biggest problem at this point. Uh, so could you... Uh, explain a little bit the difference between, uh, let's say, Western Europe and Northern Europe and their supply chain as far as gas goes and, for example, our region, because it seems our region is at this point better supplied with gas and has l less problems supply, uh, uh, securing enough gas supply for the winter than, for example, the Western European countries. So... Could you explain why this is and, and what the difference is between this region and, for example, Western Europe or, or Northern Europe? Theoretically, the situation should be the opposite because Western countries are uh, having more diversified uh, supply routes and supply access. So I think it's, it's more, more a price question uh, than actually a molecule question, uh, what, what we are facing uh, today at the European market. 
And uh, since the prices are very high, and for example, LNG prices are very high due to the high Asian uh, demand. So therefore, of course, it's very expensive to, to buy uh, LNG gas in for Western European countries. And therefore, they are not doing that. But it's not because uh, the molecule is not available. Uh, so I think it's, it's more a price question. And uh, uh, I do not see uh, such a severe situation, uh, especially in our region. In case of Hungary, I think we have qu quite a, uh, a good, good situation because we have substantial gas storages in Hungary, which are uh, filled up more than 70%. Uh, we have also strategic storage, which is filled up more than 90%. Uh, and uh, actually, we have also uh, the new uh, gas contract, as Mr. Ambassador also mentioned, uh, with the new supply route coming from Serbia. But we are supplied also with gas from the Austrian side. And fortunately, we have also the Croatian LNG, which is a, a full uh, new opportunity for diversification. So I think uh, in terms of supply security, uh, we are quite in a good good uh, situation. The, the price question, this is a different question. And um, that's what, um, what uh, makes life quite difficult now in, 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 in Europe, because this unexpected uh, increase in prices, uh, this is quite a new situation. Uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, confident that the prices will go a little bit down, but I don't think that the all price levels will return as we are used to it during the last couple of uh, years. So this is a key question, what, how, how the market will uh, develop. But I think from, um, from supply security point of view, at least in Hungary, we are in quite a good situation. And, and of course, uh, from that sense, uh, the interconnectors matter. And uh, it's a very favorable situation now that we are very, very well interconnected. You know, it was a historical heritage that uh, th those interconnectors were not present because each country was linked directly to the uh, Russian supply, but not to each other. And I think here we progressed a lot uh, during the last uh, years, which was, which was very, very important in terms of supply uh, security. Uh, the second question I also is want to ask you. It's a follow-up question to what you just said. Is state aid might be uh, a problem given the EU's reluctance to to approve state aid, and yet we have big challenges, especially as climate goals go. Uh, how do you see this developing uh, in the near future? Do you see e the EU uh, softening its stance towards state aid? Or do you see it uh, uh, holding on to the old beliefs that uh, the less state intervenes, the better when it comes to energy? It's an interesting question. And uh, uh, here we have to consider this question in a global context. And maintain that competition with them or just saying that yes uh, they will have a competitive advantage due to state aid so therefore there is a big discussion in the european union uh, whether we, we we would need uh, european champions in some uh, territories and i think there is a, a good sign uh, or a good uh, idea that the so-called ipc recording in progress project um, where in case of emerging technologies, uh, state aid rules are lessened uh, and uh, state aid can be applied uh, for, for, for some sectors. And uh, um, in case of batteries, for example, there is such, a, such an idea, which does not mean additional EU financing, but at least state aid can be provided to that companies in, in order to have uh, like European champions, but he, here the commission, Commission's approach is that it should be a multinational, multi-member state cooperation. It shouldn't be only one member state who is doing that. 
but it should be like a European cooperation, which can be provided with state aid. So I think this is a good approach, uh, but maybe we should extend the scope uh, of, of those sectors and those areas where, where we apply uh, this, this approach. Otherwise, of course, state aid rules have also some advantage uh, in the single market EI projects, um, where in case of emerging technologies, uh, state aid rules are lessened uh, and uh, state aid can be applied uh, for, for, for some sectors. And uh, um, in case of batteries, for example, there is such, a, such an idea which does not mean additional EU financing, but at least state aid can be provided to that companies in, in order to have uh, like European champions. But he, here the commission, Commission's approach is that it should be a multinational, multi-member state cooperation. It shouldn't be only one member state who is doing that, but it should be like a European cooperation, which can be provided with state aid. So I think this is a good approach. Uh, but maybe we should extend the scope uh, of, of those sectors and those areas where, where we apply uh, this, this approach. Otherwise, of course, state aid rules have also some advantage uh, in the single market of the European Union because smaller, uh, smaller players are also protected. Uh, and so therefore we have to uh, handle the, uh, this question very carefully. But I think now, having seen the magnitude and, and the scale of the challenge, I think we have to revisit definitely the existing state aid uh, framework. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to go over to our Croatian side to Ms. Celic from uh, our Ministry of, of uh, Economy and Development. Uh, what is Croatia's situation? Now, we've heard how Hungary stands as far as the suppliers go, storage goes, and so on, uh, interconnectivity. Uh, Croatia is also uh, uh, fairly unworried by the, uh, by the developments in the energy market in, in Europe. So could you give us an overview of Croatia's situation as far as gas and electricity go? Are we supplied? Are we safe until... Uh, spring and so on and why are we so tranquil as far as uh, our supplies go let's say that nobody is tranquil at this moment but uh, we are pretty stable as we are, uh, if we are speaking about security of supply yes electricity and this is the point of this what the, the, the prices as we heard and we know the prices are uh, the last three months really uh, jeopardize all stabili stability of these systems. But uh, uh, you know, with the good interconnections and good uh, infrastructure, which has built uh, has been built in 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 the uh, recent uh, uh, period, the last ten years, we we made a, a really big effort and in the last uh, few years, uh, particularly when we uh, started and built our LNG terminal and uh, uh, also the uh, upgrading their connections. So Uh, you, it, it, it uh, couldn't uh, be uh, be uh, divided from uh, from this uh, this uh, gas market. So the greatest influence of the uh, prices, increasing prices in electricity, also, also was the gas price of gas. So two things are important to 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 evaluate. That means interconnection, and the second, how the, the uh, some of countries are. Uh, what is the dependence of this gas supply? How uh, how uh, um, uh, what are the quantities in the in the in the in the energy mix? Uh, what are the quantities of gas 
gas in production of electricity. So uh, the Croatia and Hungary are on the same, let's say, level uh, of, of in the in this. And uh, uh, also, this is very important because not only our infrastructure but also our stock in change are very uh, in the connection, and we develop that open market. We think in Croatia uh, that the open market is the one of the of very very important things and uh, uh, state aid rules we are not so let's say um, not relying on these state aid rules in this market we are we we, we would like to see uh, energy in our energy strategic documents and everything what we are doing now is uh, is uh, in favor of renewable energy sources we would like also to seal this this small scale um, electricity production and secure of supply and uh, 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 higher involved of of, of uh, uh, our citizens and our companies and our economy uh, industry in this in this transition and for these things when you are not the uh, you know your basic uh, your basic activity is not a, uh, production from energy but if you want to participate of this market we think that the state aid could help and and could increase the competitiveness of our economies so this is this is uh, what uh, what are our uh, let's say uh, our thoughts when when it comes to security of supply, to infrastructure, and also this thing you couldn't uh, make uh, happen without a good connection with your neighbors, particularly, and then in also our connection in the region. Thank you very much for your uh, concise answer. Uh, uh, now, you've mentioned, and also your colleague Steiner mentioned, this is probably one of the most mentioned things as, as far as energy goes, especially this year, is the LNG terminal in uh, in uh, Croatia. So I would like to uh, now ask Mr. Sinisha Kovac, who is from LNG Croatia, to, uh, to tell us a, a little bit about the LNG project. Now, it was very controversial in Croatia. It took uh, many years to be completed. Uh, there was a lot of controversy, acrimony. People were saying, we don't need it. It's too expensive and so on. Uh, do you feel that with this year and the situation as it is in the energy market, uh, the LNG Croatia terminal is uh, somewhat justified, finally? Would you agree with that? During the country. I really don't, uh, a lot was already speak about this, and when you said the controversial, I, I wouldn't say it, you know, a lot of controversial, o only from the maybe political view. The all energy experts and everybody was actually informed, and I think that the, 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 the project by itself will, uh, will see, and the proof uh, importance, uh, also market, uh, has shown that, you know, this project is more than welcome because our capacity are uh, actually booked almost uh, for the, this year. For, we, we will work like 90, more than 95% of our available capacity in the market. So the, the market players are interested. And uh, controversial maybe more about, you know, offshore, onshore solution, the capacities and everything. However, we choose the, uh, the most uh, cheapest solution. So the, our theory from the beginning is very affordable. And this was also uh, approved by, uh, by, by booking uh, by a market plan. Also, you know, uh, because of that, because of this uh, uh, pressure during the construction and everything, we can state that you know we build the the, the uh, LNG terminal by the highest technology and uh, and uh, enver environmental uh, 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 standards, and we prove it you know on the way that uh, the whole the biggest uh, players in the LNG global markets, Total, Shell, Qatar Gas, British Petroleum, already. Uh, sent their ships to our terminal and this really just uh, state that you know we 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 done uh, our job uh, very successfully could you also specify because many people uh, especially in croatia uh, don't understand how the lng actually works 
So uh, who supplies the gas? Uh, it's stored there. Who can withdraw gas from the storages? Uh, who owns the gas at this point in the storages in, in, in the LNG? Uh, my understanding is it's private, so it's a commercial storage. Uh, the gas there is owned by commercial entities, companies who can withdraw their share of, of gas at any point. So could you elaborate on how it actually works? Yeah, okay. In a few few words. First of all, when we speak about the LNG, I mean the LNG state for the liquefied natural gas. So we speak about the nature of gas, but on other liquefied form. The natural gas is produced somewhere and it's liquefied, to, which means that, you know, on the temperature of minus 160 degree of the Celsius, he is not vapor anymore, but it's now state of the liquid. Why is that good? Because it's very good for the transportation on the ships with LNG carriers. Why LNG carriers? You know, that means that when you have the access to the maritime logistic and everything, you can bring your natural gas actually and send it to every uh, uh, LNG terminal import LNG terminal as our in our on the Kirk anywhere in the world uh, you know that proof uh, for the first time in Croatia and this is the role that you know the you we have the, now the third molecule physical molecule on our market so far it was only domestic production and the imported pipeline gas and now Without need to actually build the additional pipeline, you have access to the global market of the natural gas. Uh, for instance, we already received our 16 cargo from around the world. And I can say, you know, it was from United States of America, Qatar, uh, Nigeria, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, recently Trinidad Tobago, uh, 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 Egypt for the first time, etc., etc. You know, now with Making such an infrastructure, we are really part of the of the global uh, world, and uh, our terminal users. This is the answer to your question. Who actually use the terminal, and this is the most biggest company with a higher uh, uh, share in the market. It's Ina, Hep, uh, Met, MVM, C Energy, and the PPD. They actually. Uh, have the opportunity to go uh, a little wider and to to supply their portfolio in this region with actually some kind of uh, additional and opportunities and everything which we uh, hope that will make the more uh, liquidity on the market itself and uh, as we mentioned before that we are really equalized with the price of the uh, natural gas. Uh, looking globally. When they uh, bring the, their cargo, uh, for, for instance, for the next gas year, we are ex uh, expecting 20, 24 energy carriers to arrive to Croatia terminal, and uh, we are expecting that we will regasify for them 2.2 billion of cubic meter of LNG, which will be sent out into the transmission grid. Uh, that means, you know, that uh, it's their additional or diversified uh, portfolio, and uh, they will use it in the way that every two weeks uh, LNG carrier will arrive. And uh, in the meantime, what we receive on our uh, terminal, we will regasify it. Uh, I mean, regasify it means sent from the liquefied form back to the vapor and then sent out into the grid. In short, <laughs> there is a lot of things going in the meantime, but. It's too complicated to, 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 to talk about this now. We, we get the gist of it. I, I think uh, we understood what uh, how it works. Okay, now I'd just like to go back to uh, Mr. Steiner for, for, for a minute uh, uh, and ask him uh, if he could just elaborate uh, shortly on what uh, the, uh, the Hungarian energy mix is. So I think you have five uh, coal, power plants, which will be a problem as far as climate goes, uh, as opposed to Croatia's only one. And uh, I'd just like to know more, and I guess the other participants as well, about how much renewables you have, how much coal power, nuclear power. Obviously, you're betting on nuclear power as well, given uh, Pax 2, uh, Pax 2, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, in short, what, what is uh, uh, Hungary's energy mix? 
Yes, actually, we have uh, currently one big remaining coal-fired power plant. Uh, this is uh, the so-called Matra power plant. It's no northeast Hungary. And actually, this uh, power plant alone is responsible for 14% of uh, the Hungarian CO2 emission. So therefore, to uh, do something with that power plant, this is actually one of the biggest uh, climate-related projects in Hungary. And uh, our plan is that we will switch uh, the technology uh, to gas fire, the modern gas fire CCGT uh, technology, because that uh, that fairly quick. That's a fairly quick uh, solution. And if we will manage to get all of the EU approvals and the EU funds, then uh, the plan is that uh, by the end of 2025, we will manage to convert the power plant into this uh, modern technology. And this would reduce by 70% the CO2 emission of that power plant. So I think this would be a quick win. Um, but otherwise, 40-50% uh, of the Hungarian elect electricity production comes from the Poch, the existing POCS power plant. So this is, for Hungary, it's a crucial objective to maintain this capacity for the long term. Uh, and that actually, that's the aim of the POX2 project, the new blocks. We will substitute uh, on the long term uh, the existing uh, capacities. There will be a slight increase uh, in the capacity, and there will be also some years uh, with parallel operation. But otherwise, the um, the aim is to maintain this 40-50% uh, of uh, local electricity production coming from nuclear. And here, uh, of course, the taxonomy rules are very important for us, which is now heavily discussed in the European Union. But I'm quite optimistic that there will be a positive outcome. We see some signs from uh, the uh, European Commission. And this is also true for the natural gas, because uh, natural gas is, is much more cleaner than, than coal. And uh, to provide enough flexibility, uh, natural gas will play a very important role, as, at, at least as a transitional fuel uh, in the coming decades. And of course, uh, we are also examining how existing natural gas assets can be later on converted into hydrogen assets. Uh, because I think that will be a very interesting uh, topic in the coming years. But um, uh, currently we have like 14% of renewable. Uh, mostly uh, we have biomass and solar. But in case of solar, and the, our strategy aims to have um, uh, 6,000 megawatt solar by 2030. Currently we are around 2,600. So there is a quite a significant increase during the last years in, in the solar capacities. Uh, and we have also a support scheme, which we will start in December for households, for uh, uh, poor households uh, to support them uh, with state uh, funds and EU funds to be able to increase the capacities for the residential consumers in solar. So I think this is a very promising uh, uh, program. And actually, our, our aim is that by 2030, in Hungary, 90% of the electricity generation will be CO2 emission free. This is the main goal, what we would like to achieve. And I think if we can go on that path and implement uh, the uh, uh, projects which are planned, then we will reach that objective. So this is a nutshell. Thank you very much for your answer. Now, uh, another thing that was mentioned a lot was prices. And so I would like to go to Mr. Mikulic, Ante Mikulic uh, from Kropex, which is Croatia's energy exchange, and uh, ask Mr. Mikulic how he feels about prices. So what, what are some of the expectations about price movements as far as the gas and electricity go in Europe? Um, this is probably the biggest question right now especially with the uh, winter coming and the, the heating season starting, uh, everybody's wondering, well, the prices, uh, where the prices will go. So so what's your take on this, Mr. Mikulic? Yeah, hello. So uh, thank you for inviting us first to place uh, for this round table. And uh, just to reflect on your question, basically 
now we have seen a little stabilization of these prices because uh, in the autumn we there was such a big spikes in the prices both gas and electricity because they are interconnected in a lot of ways but we see that now these prices have stabilized and also the financial contracts for the future contracts for the next uh, three to five years are showing that there will be some recovery of these prices unfortunately uh, we believe that the, the prices that we have seen in the previous years will never let's say not in the near future come back to the 30 or 40 euros per megawatt hour for let's say base load uh, energy but uh, the, some predictions are going in the sense that they will uh, relax the situation so this this is only a temporary let's say this year this winter situation uh, we are now floating on the more or less the same levels but uh, there's a lot of um, unknowns and uncertainties that we are not know because it's highly dependent on the metro weather conditions we don't still don't know how the winter will be uh, we know, we know that the gas storages and their capacities are not really filled to the uh, 100% so it really depends on a lot of inputs if this price will now is stabilized or it will be uh, additional going on the upward trend so but uh, for now it seems that it has stabilized uh, more or less you mentioned now a few factors but could you give us uh, an, an overview of uh, all the factors which are key in determining how the price moves at this point and uh, in the near future what what drives the price of gas what drives the price of uh, electricity in, in in europe yeah uh, so this uh, for the electricity price uh, it was driven uh, this uh, this year uh, with a lot of influences uh, one of thing is that we have a lot of green transition with where the energy mix is changing throughout the whole europe uh, we know that the energy markets are interconnected in this way so they influence a lot especially in the small countries as croatia where where our price is lots of dependent on the central western european prices so we have uh, two factors there that uh, we have a uh, less wind production for this year so the uh, we have exchanged this energy mix was exchanged with a lot of wind power plants and now this wind let's say has given less input to it on the other hand we heard also uh, previously that the gas prices went up uh, due to the many factors of this uh, the asian prices went up uh, and the whole geopolitical situation and uh, with the lack of wind the, the these gas prices uh, influences the production for the gas power plants and uh, the main concept of the electricity market model is that is using a marginal pricing model meaning that the last uh, the price of the last uh, let's say producer is uh, giving this marginal price and uh, currently this is this uh this is the gas uh, gas power plants that are let's say dictating this uh, high price a little bit and also with the green transition we are seeing that the prices of the co2 emissions uh, are also increasing uh, uh, the transition is an ongoing factor and it, it it's not an easy job for all of us and it's ongoing and uh, we still have some production from the coal but then on this production we have this uh, co2 emission that is Uh, adding up on the total let's say production price and we have seen that now this uh, co2 emission price i believe it's around 70 euros or something and it uh, per ton and it's and it's still rising so even let's say the prices have been stabilized uh, in the last month for a little bit but for this emission price it's still on the upward trend and nobody's really sure what where is the stabilization stabilization point for the emissions so these are a lot of these influences that, that that are driving the market and also we have on the covid-19 situation where uh, for the electricity market the production and the consumption has to always has to has to be balanced and on the consumption part we had a year with the low consumption due because of the lockdowns and then the the economy or uh, was just restarted let's say again and then this consumption increased and this also was uh, one of the drivers for this price we can see now that uh, we had some um, let's say forecasts for a mild winter then it switched to the let's say okay to the not so mild winter but then we are experiencing now lockdowns uh, in europe through various countries and they're saying okay maybe we'll have a colder winter 
but then it will influence the consumption part. So it's really a dynamic, dynamic months ahead of us. So and uh, a lot of factors have been uh, involved in driving this uh, price of the electricity in the Europe and also in Croatia, Hungary and the region. Much. So, uh, bearing this in mind, <clears throat> I would like to go over to Mr. Luka Pehar from uh, Hrote, one of Croatia's energy agencies, and uh, uh, ask Mr. Pehar, uh, how will these prices of electricity and gas and, and everything we've now just heard uh, uh, from Mr. Miklic, uh, how will this uh, affect Croatia's energy market and uh, energy needs in, in, in the near term and, uh, and in the present? Uh, hello everyone and thank you for the invites to this round table. Well, uh, what has uh, already been said about the prices for the electricity and for the gas. Uh, Croatia is a part of Southeast Europe and you already know that this part of Europe is very much affected by hydrology. So that's another uh, uh, effect that uh, could be on the price. Uh, so basically in uh, this year, in 2020, we had a 10% lower hydrology than average, and that also impacted the electricity prices. Uh, and I think for the next quarter, uh, the first quarter of 2022, uh, we will have a much higher price than expected. We have already seen uh, increased volatility for the next quarter due to the uncertainty about the Nord Stream 2 project. So basically, uh, for the next year, uh, the households, uh, uh, consumers uh, of electricity, uh, I think that they will not be affected much by the rising prices because most of the uh, most of the uh, suppliers have been hedged for the next year, so they are not expecting expecting to increase the prices for the households. Uh, not so much for the business consumers; so they will be uh, somewhat affected by the rising electricity prices for the next year. So basically, what we expect is that the prices for the next year will be around 80 euros uh, per megawatt, and for the first quarter it will be well above 20, 220 euros, uh, which is something that has not happened in the past. So the suppliers that have been uh, hedged for the next year are safe, and their uh, consumers are also safe, but those that have missed the uh, hedging uh, and uh, those that are um, uh, more open to the spot market, they will see uh, probably a loss of the consumers. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 that's, uh, I think, as far as we go uh, regarding prices now, I'd like to switch over to the next subject and then that would lead me back to Mr. Steiner is, um, uh, what are your plans as regards energy in the near future? Uh, so you mentioned this before, and, and if you could elaborate, maybe give us some ex exact uh, numbers if you have them, projects if you have them at hand, uh, as to how Hungary will uh, will uh, tackle its climate goals. So it has its own goals to reach. Uh, how will you approach these goals? Yes, um... If you consider that we have the 2050 climate neutrality objective, and usually we compare the progress to 1990, so we are currently at halfway. So I think it's good to have a discussion on that. So what what uh, we have already achieved, and uh, if we consider that Hungary already reduced its emissions by 32 percent compared to 1990. Uh, so we are among the 10 best performers uh, in the European Union. Um, I checked also the numbers uh, for each member state, and um, there are some, some surprises. Um, for example, some countries not uh, did not manage to reduce CO2 emissions, but even increased emissions by 2000 uh, by uh, f uh, compared to 1990 level like uh, Spain, Portugal, and there was also uh, a country which was very surprising to me, this is Austria. Austria even increased its emissions uh, compared to 1990 level. Of course, they, I think they had a very low level as a starting point, so that could be one reason for that. But still, everybody has to reach uh, you know, climate neutrality. And uh, I think this is very important to have some more convergence uh, among among member states, but with regards to Hungarian uh, plans, the so one which I already mentioned to decarbonize uh, the electricity generation sector, 
And as I mentioned, by 2030, we would like to have a 90% CO2 emission-free generation. So if we will have clean electricity, that electricity can be also used in other sectors. And here the mobility, the transport sector uh, comes in, uh, which is uh, responsible for 20% of Hungarian emissions. And if we can uh, improve uh, the share of electric mobility and also other technologies like hydrogen or synthetic fuel and so on, then I think we, that could be already a big progress. And we started to implement a, a very wide uh, ranging program to change uh, the old uh, buses to electric buses in Hungary. And our plan is that we will change in the coming years more than 1,000 buses to electric buses. And we have a green bus program for that, uh, which is currently in a demonstration phase to have some real experiences, how you charge those buses and how you can, you have to uh, uh, maintain those buses. So this is very important to have this pilot program, but from next year on, we will have uh, like fleets, electric bus fleets and, we will make it step by step. So this is a big uh, program, uh, which is uh, very important. Then I mentioned also the uh, POX2 project to maintain uh, for the long term uh, the, uh, the share of nuclear energy. This is very important. And of course, uh, um, to have new technologies. So innovation, innovation is very important. And we just recently uh, approved our hydrogen strategy, uh, where we identified some uh, elements of the supply chain where Hungary can have some competitive advantage. And uh, we see uh, the existence of a robust natural gas network as a competitive advantage. And we have also several pilot projects, how we, you can blend uh, hydrogen with natural gas and to transport it or to store it underground. And we have a pilot project also for, for, for that. So I think mobility to use the existing assets as much as, as much as possible for new purposes, for new technologies, renewable energy uh, and, and nuclear energy. So these are the main uh, priorities for us. Now I would like to go over with more or less the same question to uh, Ms. Celic. Uh, what are Croatia's challenges with regards to climate goals? So what are some of the key green projects that we have uh, uh, in store in the pipeline? Uh, if you elaborate on some of them, we'd be grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, we are pretty on the same track. We, we, we need to develop more renewable energy uh, uh, and uh, to in, uh, introduce it into to our energy system. That means produ new production capacities. And we hope uh, if we are speaking about uh, electricity sector, production of electricity, that in the next uh, three years, we will connect to the grid uh, uh, new capacities of, of uh, 1500. Uh, that means that we need also to upgrade our uh, inland uh, distribution system and also transmission system. This is this is something that we need uh, to to have uh, and uh, new capacities on this uh, in this point. And this is a part of our national recovery and resilient uh, uh, plan. So uh, here uh, now we are uh, working on that and. Uh, colleague uh, Damian will, will uh, say uh, uh, more about this topic, but uh, when we come to, to uh, production facilities, then uh, we would like to uh, uh, have investments uh, uh, in, uh, in larger scale in geothermal. And uh, also we are, uh, we are thinking about um, how to overcome this situation with uh, cooling and heating and uh, to manage this uh, such a really ambitious target when we are speaking about a new uh, uh, directive and fit, fit for 55 uh, targets. 
And we see geothermal potential in Croatia as, as a potential answer for this, these questions. That means that we have uh, on the, on the uh, north parts of Croatia heating through renewables uh, geothermal and also production of electricity when it is possible. And on the uh, south part in Croatia, we know that there is a lot of potential for wind and solar uh, uh, infrastructure, but uh, that need to be followed with its infrastructure in transmission and gri uh, 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 grid and uh, uh, transmission and distribution grid lines. So, so this is a challenge uh, which is also expect, uh, expensive, and I and I, I mentioned that we needed to to use funds for these these things, and uh, also also uh, mobility is one uh, new topic. Uh, uh, and we have such projects for, for uh, alternative infrastructure, that, uh, that means uh, charging stations for electricity. And also we are supporting our local uh, local cities and uh, to, to, to develop this infrastructure. So, so this will be also be supported. And uh, we need to think also uh, on the you know, comprehensive way to, to think of agriculture, maybe geothermal in agriculture, Culture is also important to have to reduce uh, dependence of uh, import uh, import uh, uh, import fuels. Let's say among them, yes, is the the the, the in uh, the first point. So uh, uh, when it comes to gas and this uh, heating and cooling, we also have high efficiency cogeneration, and we think that in this period up to 2030, they are very very important and. Uh, also, um, uh, it is important, as, as Mr. Steiner said, uh, that uh, that uh, uh, think about uh, 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 hydrogen as a fuel that could be combined, blended with gas. So to, again, to reduce that dependence and to produce hydrogen from the so uh, from green sources. So this is uh, this is. In, the, in short, what we are doing, what we are uh, thinking in this uh, uh, 20 and 30, and uh, it will be also, uh, you know, we will proceed with this. Uh, um, and uh, it, in this case, I need to think that it is very important to have mature technologies on the market. For example, we are also emerging CCS technologies, but they are, they are st still not commercial. So we need to to, to think about uh, also car carbon capturing uh, uh, because it we will have no neutrality on the market if, if all technologies are are uh, you know we are not looking at all possibilities in this market. Thank you very much. Now this brings us to the financial part, and uh, uh, Mr. Bekefi has been very patient so far. So. These are, are, are your minutes now. Uh, uh, the first question would be, since you're uh, president of, of, of uh, OTP Banka, uh, the financial sector is coming under rising pressure not to finance uh, carbon projects and, uh, and climate unfriendly projects uh, with, or projects which are in, in contradiction with climate goals. So what is OTP's view on this and, and, and what's your portfolio like at this point? Uh, Thank you for the question. It was very interesting to hear different views so, uh, so far. Uh, I fully agree that the financial sector is coming under pressure from, uh, from this point of view as well, but I would rather say that this pressure is rather ESG focus, environmental, social and, uh, and, uh, and governance. And uh, all the, both our investors, owners, clients are are uh, looking and also regulators are pushing the banks in in order to put uh, focus first internally and after this internal focus to to require the same from their clients so uh, otp's answer first was to open an esg project on uh, on group level first of course in hungary then uh, then uh, croatia uh, followed it uh, shortly after and uh, and uh, and the first uh, end product of this uh, project was a ESG strategy. 
where uh, we defined what are the main goals and what will we require from uh, from our clients. Um, we, this means that also the, all these ESG aspects which should, we should include in our business processes, uh, both in our credit approvals, in credit processes, but also in the product development. Um, we, however, we, uh, we don't see it only as a punishment, let's say, or an additional burden on the, ban on the bank, but also as a business potential, because uh, all those clients that are uh, at the beginning of their journey, they will need to uh, invest into green energy, they will need to invest into new technologies, and, uh, and for that, they would need financing. For this financing, of course, there are EU funds they, they can use, but, uh, uh, but some of the, the funds they would require also as, um, as loan or, or a, a, a additional uh, input. Uh, these uh, sectors are typically r real estate, uh, construction, ag ag agriculture, transportation, uh, and then, of course, storage to energy sector. Uh, as a first part, we'll start with due diligence, of course, for these clients. And, uh, and in this due diligence, we'll, we'll set later on uh, in which category can we, can, can we put the client. It is extremely environmentally unfriendly or it is extremely un environmentally friendly. So uh, um, could, could you give us, do you have any uh, specific investments at this point, uh, which are, you know, ex exclusively climate goal oriented? Yes, uh, uh, this portfolio is uh, uh, in our books is above uh, uh, already above five hundred million kunas, uh, a bit more than seventy million euros, and they are exclusively uh, environmental target uh, uh, target goals, usually connected to wind or biomass. Uh, still, we we see through credit applications that more and more credit applications are, are coming for uh, for for this purpose so uh, so we believe that this portfolio will will increase pretty much in the in the upcoming future that's exactly what i wanted to ask you so so uh, there is interest from the clients they are actually interested in in such uh, such investments absolutely because uh, uh, bank is only the first step uh, as we are changing the internal procedure, uh, we have already identified or created a short audit questionnaire for uh, for the clients. So we are also going to ask them uh, the questions: What are you doing? How are you investing? What are your main goals? Are you on the on the beginning of the journey, or you are already in the middle of some kind of uh, uh, transformation? Based on this, uh, based on this uh, audit, the the clients will also see that. Uh, um uh, they they should make a move and of course this move is being uh, uh, supported uh, by eu funds so it is also uh, an as aspect that we uh, sh shouldn't neglect for for next year we also aim to focus our product product development in a way that uh, we are uh, always distributing our pro product portfolio into let's say ESG compatible and, and non ESG compatible where we would uh, uh, where we would also like to put some uh, financial benefits for for those clients for those uh, loans uh, that we know that are uh, that where we know that the funds are going into an environmental friendly investment now, uh, you've also touched upon this but uh, maybe to be more precise looking internally uh, uh, what changes are you introducing inside your corporate culture to, to sort of uh, align yourself with, with these new goals and, and this new ESG type of, uh, of looking at, at the way of doing business, not just uh, shareholders, but stakeholders as well? Uh, I think it's extremely important because uh, ESG, uh, although it is being touched only on, on, on a high level at the moment, there are lots of changes going around. Uh, it has been announced that uh, some some parts of the IFRS are, are going to be changed. There is also a, a regulatory requirement in Croatia and also from uh, from the e European Central Bank. So we should take the whole change uh, extremely seriously. We can only take it seriously if uh, if we address it on the highest level. Therefore, we have created an ESG board 
which consists of the board members. So we didn't, we did not give the freedom to to any of the board members not to be included in the in the in in the process. And this uh, this board reviews the status of the ESG implementation project at least uh, once in every every quarter, and we also give directions which uh, which way to move forward. Also, education uh, is an extremely important part uh, because uh, we can only make sure that this process is in, incorporated in our internal process, uh, procedure and processes uh, if we know that people know what what what, what is their task. So uh, both already last year, but also this year, we have uh, organized education not only for the board, but all for all uh, uh, um, managing directors and and directors and we have also created a special task force that are basically going through all these processes which consists of 55 members so it is a ex- extremely large uh, project within the bank and we believe that one if, if it comes from the top then it goes through the whole or- or organization and becomes a part of uh, of the corporate culture itself down as the Americans would say yeah okay thank you sorry muted myself uh, now going over to Mrs. Tokai uh, from Hungary's energy company uh, I would like to stick with this uh, greening subject uh, which is probably the most important subject that we can talk about today so what projects are you planning in the near term uh, as far as the energy company in in, in Hungary and probably the first and the most important institution to 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 carry, so so to speak, the burden of of, of climate uh, climate uh, alignment. Uh, what are some of your projects, and where do you see the potential to to cooperate with Croatia? Yeah, thank you very much for the question. Um, and just to continue, uh, Mr. Bekev is. Um, uh, thoughts uh, and to mention that in the very short term we have basically full, just fulfilled one of our major plans as we have issued a 500 million euro bond just recently very successfully so basically there's a room for for investment uh, or additional investments which which we uh, have been planning already but uh, just to sum up a little bit what what we have already heard today is that uh, um, as I put it, that the energy sector is currently in front of a kind of crossroad because uh, basically there are the challenges of uh, the renewable energy sector, which is uh, here with us, which needs to be increased uh, in the short, but also in, in the long to- term. But even more uh, important maybe is the uh, role of flexibility uh, and um, especially when taking into consideration that we are in the transition phase to renewables, but we are still relying on existing, let's say, traditional generation capacities. Uh, There is the need uh, to make the developments. For example, like Mr. Steiner said, we are um, phasing out the coal power plant of Matra uh, by the end of uh, 2025 uh, and implementing a 500 megawatt CCGT there. And uh, uh, last but not least, regarding flexibility, there is uh, the the big question and the big challenge regarding the natural gas uh, dependence on which here we in the region are all, um, let's say, players or or sometimes viewers of of, uh, situations that are going on um, in the world. Uh, so basically, for, for these challenges, uh, we were uh, thinking out, I, I mean, the entire energy sector has big homework uh, regarding this uh, to, to give answers to these challenges. And we think that some solutions might be, uh, as mentioned, and, and where uh, Ms. Celic uh, and Mr. Steiner were also uh, stressing that, uh, uh, for example, expanding the existing toolkit meaning uh, the uh, increase of mobility, for example, and the new product lines and infrastructure uh, expansion in alternative mobility uh, and let's say alternative usage of gas storages and gas networks. That can be a kind of uh, solution for some of our problems. 
Uh, I believe it's important to focus on digitalization as well uh, among the entire value chain, which we currently know uh, and are aware of. And uh, there is uh, in this process of digitalization and in the value chain a very important uh, role player, which is the consumer, uh, him or herself, uh, who needs to be turned into some kind of a prosumer at one point of time. Um, and, and it is also very important when talking about solution that we are considering is the improvement in technologies, in technologies which are uh, supporting the, uh, the renewables uh, and the decrease of, of carbon footprint of, of energy companies. Uh, this can be, of course, done by uh, introducing more uh, efficient uh, and and sometimes even more, more flexible renewable resources, uh, storages. Uh, I mean, here the large scale storages and battery projects, uh, but also the network tools and the related grid, grid upgrades uh, can be put in. Let's say these kind of uh, topics. Uh, so basically, like like MVM uh, stated in its strategy, uh, we are here to to uh, uh, implement, and this is the biggest challenge with Mr. Steiner started the conversation, the implementation of, of these goals, but we have um, uh, clear milestones and, uh, and we are determined to uh, phase out uh, the Matra power plant, the coal power plant, to introduce additional uh, uh, primarily uh, PV uh, renewable resources into our portfolio in order to support uh, Hungarian's national uh, energy uh, goals and targets. Um, and we are also um, um, big players on the natural gas market, as, as it was uh, already said, MVM has the uh, most of the storage capacities uh, in Hungary. Um, and uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, the plans for Croatia, well, we are kind of uh, already partners with uh, the Croatian companies. I'm very sorry that HAP couldn't um, take part in this conversation, but uh, we have a long-term uh, wholesale um, cooperation with them. And uh, we are uh, the biggest uh, off-taker uh, and uh, commercial player in the Croatian LNG story via our subsidiary C Energy Croatia. Uh, what is very important to mention that, that uh, I believe that this uh, cooperation uh, must be uh, expanded and, and increased, uh, but it is important that uh, not only at the beginning of the cooperation, but in the entire procedure, for example, uh, taking this uh, LNG project into um, account, is that all parties have a positive attitude uh, during the entire project, uh, as is not only at the beginning, as this is, as we all know, a project of regional importance, a project which enhances the security of supply of the entire region, and as uh, it is uh, of EU's importance. So I believe that as we started, we need to continue the cooperation uh, like that. Uh, and speaking about other projects, we are very much interested in mobility, e-mobility projects uh, as MVM and the cooperation with potential Croatian partners to joint ventures or other types of cooperation, the EPC services, the engineering procurement and construction services, and also um, of course, as mentioned, the renewable projects, um, and and we could also uh, brainstorm on on the, the cooperation or further cooperation of our stock exchanges. Well, thank you very much. Now, I'd like to just uh, go back to the financing because you know it's always about the money in the end. You know, everybody has very ambitious goals, but some somebody needs to pay for them. So uh, Hungary is also expecting a lot of money from the, the EU fund, the, the next generation EU fund. Uh, how reliant are your plans at MVM uh, on that money? Are, are you counting on that money a lot? Uh, would it make a difference if uh, these problems, these issues between Hungary and the EU would uh, persist for a while? Uh, how are you with, with the EU funds? 
Um, as I mentioned, uh, we have just gained additional financing from the market, and it's very important to stress uh, while MVM is a 100% state-owned company, it's a Hungarian state-owned asset, let's put it that way, uh, the blue chip, uh, but we are entirely financed from the market. So basically, we have bankable financing, uh, so our projects need to be bankable as well. So as long as uh, it is uh, our consideration, or we are, um, let's say, uh, very... Uh, positive uh, regarding the EU funds. Uh, we are counting on them. But when we were um, considering a, a project and, and uh, calculating the money, as you put it, uh, or the net present value of one, uh, we were taking into account bankable uh, positions. So basically, uh, yes, if, if anything happens, which I personally believe it will not, uh, then we would need to rethink our financing, but not our investment plans. We are determined to fulfill them. So not that reliant, basically, is what you're saying. We can okay, put it that you. way. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Now, uh, let's see what uh, Mr. Blažević has to say. I see he is with us now. So we have a representative from Croatia's energy company, the leading institution as far as energy goes in Croatia. And uh, I have to stress that he is mostly specialized in gas. Uh, but since we don't have, as I see, a person from Plinacro, I will redirect some of the questions regarding gas that were supposed to go to Plinacro to Mr. Blažević from HEP. Uh, but let's stick with this subject a little bit more. So uh, uh, can you tell us, Mr. Blažević, uh, uh, what is HEP's plan as far as climate goal? reaching and alignment goals. Uh, what are some of your projects that you're working on and that you're planning in the near future? Hello, greetings, greetings from, from, from our headquarters. Yes, I, I joined just a minute mi minute after. I had some technical difficulties. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. We tested everything yesterday. Everything was okay. And then, of course, by Murphy law, Murphy's laws, uh, this morning, uh, everything uh, <laughs> went black. So uh, yes, I can I can just continue on what uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Celic uh, already said. So we are developing the uh, new renewable projects, uh, solar, wind power. We la last year we invested about four billion kunas into the new projects. We are also investing um, uh, our for further developments in hydropower plants, in renewables as solar and wind power. Uh, we have a few. Um, we, we have the wind power already in uh, Korlat, uh, 58 megawatts. Uh, we have five uh, big uh, solar power plants already online. Um, we are developing and, and uh, making new investments in district heating, um, uh, also uh, the uh, pipeline for, for the, the district heating. Uh, we are preparing our grid uh, to uh, be able to offtake all those renewables. Maybe Mr. Vegemoris from Hobbs can say a bit more about that from the transmission uh, from, from the transmission side. Uh, also, we are considering the possibility of um, hydrogen, of course, in the no, not in the so near future, but after 20, uh, 2030, of, of course. Um, we are also um, seeing the uh, some um, uh, hydropower plants, as I said, which is cost insane. Sane, which will be the biggest hydropower plant and the biggest project uh, in the Republic of Croatia regarding the uh, new hydropower plants. Um, so yes, we are we are looking, we are taking our part into into the, all the goals in, 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 uh, which are in front of us. And we want to be, a, and we are the active player and active uh, driver of those um, those investments uh, in the in renewables and the, of course, the green deal and everything. What what is in front of us? So, uh, just also to, to to sort of follow on on, on the questions that I'm so that I to sort of follow on, on on the questions that I'm, I'm that hearing I myself. Am. I'm sorry. There's an echo. Why is there an echo? I'm hearing myself. I'm sorry. There's an echo. Why is there an echo? Someone. Yes, maybe we'll just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so okay. That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to ask you as well as Mrs. Tokai, uh, 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 what opportunities does HEP see from the National Recovery Plan? So from these EU funds, uh, as Mrs. Tokai said, MVM is not that much reliant on those funds. It would be nice to have them, but 
you know, it's not crucial for what they're planning as far as climate goals go. Uh, how does HEP stand with, with the EU money? The, we've banked a lot in our national recovery plan on green tra transitioning and the role of HEP in, in, in this. Uh, yes, of course, we are we are not uh, dependent on the funds. All the funds are, of course, of course, of course welcome. Uh, we are uh, depending on our internal um, internal uh, um, profits that we are that we are making. But of course, that we are looking at the opportunities of get, uh, getting some more funds. It cannot it, it cannot hurt. So uh, through the decarbonization of the energy sector, uh, building the modern the digital uh, infrastructure. Structure for uh, gas, for, for power, gas, and district heating, uh, new investments into, into the re renewables, uh, development of new technologies. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, hydrogen, um, improving in our district heating, um, uh, new uh, energy efficiency measures, uh, especially in industry, uh, removing the, some barriers uh, for. Um, the, Accepting into the grid more and more renewables and all, all which it brings uh, with them their inter intermittent source, not like conventional uh, conventional uh, sources. So we have to prepare our grid uh, that to be able to um, off take off take it, and of course to try to um, lower down the uh, losses in the system, the power, the gas, and the, dist the district heating and some bo bottlenecks in this, um, uh, in this system that we would like to use those funds uh, and uh, try to uh, improve. Thank you very much now. Uh, uh, we've been through these coal plants and, and as we've heard from our Hungarian counterparts, they're basically in the same situation as we are. They have one more coal, coal, coal power plant. Uh, however, it is producing a lot of energy that they need. Uh, we also have one, it's Plomin in uh, Istria and uh, the prime minister has also uh, promise to close down the coal power plant in Istria. So how will this affect our energy supply and, and, and energy market? Uh, yes, uh, of course, as the Prime Minister said in um, Glasgow, uh, we are closing down our last po uh, coal power plant. Uh, um, well, it's more than obvious with this uh, emission prices that it's going to be less and less um, competitive on the market, so it has to go uh, offline, we are looking the possibility of changing for the alternative fuel. So by the 20, uh, 2033, it's the last deadline, but we are hoping that um, we're going to do it uh, even sooner, about 2030. And uh, uh, until that time, we have plans of uh, investment, new uh, power um, capacity of up to one, one and a half, one and a, 1500 megawatts. So it's going to be more than a sufficient um, to replace uh, the power which is produced from the common power plant. That, and we are hoping that by 2030 we're going to have self 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 efficient uh, for from the domestic production and of course security of supply. Thank you. And now for for our most patient uh, uh, guest, Mr. Damian Mejimuretz from Hops, uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, the energy grid and uh, the situation with the electricity distribution grid, as Mr. Uh, uh, um, Blažević mentioned. Uh, before, so what is the overall condition of, of Croatia's electricity grid, uh, distribution grid, and what are some of the key challenges as far as the grid goes? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so first, just uh, slightly cor correct your question. Uh, Hops is Croatian transmission system operator, although in, uh, how to say, like terms, distribution uh, involves both transmission and distribution. Um, I will be able to speak only um, regarding the transmission uh, grid. Uh, Mr. Blažević uh, uh, already mentioned uh, some items concerning also distribution grid. Of course, there are lot of uh, things in common and uh, especially with uh, the green transition the interaction both infrastructurally and market related uh, between transmission and distribution grid is uh, very important and therefore also our cooperation with our colleagues from uh, HEP DSO. Um, as uh, Croatian transmission grid is concerned um, unlike Hungarian it consists from three voltage levels, so uh, not only 400 and 220, but also 110. 
and um, it's uh, historically mm, very uh, good interconnected. So Croatia is on the electricity interconnections among top three or top five uh, in in EU. Uh, it's not only historically or from the old history, but also in the last, let's say, 20 years. The biggest increase of our interconnections was exactly with Hungary, with the two big projects. And uh, these interconnections uh, create for both, not only for both countries, but also for the broader region, uh, very important uh, electricity highways, let's say, yeah? both uh, concerning Southeast neighbors, but also in the North and West. Um, our grid um, is in the stable and reliant uh, uh, status. Uh, in the last decades, uh, after uh, finalizing the uh, reconstruction of the war damages, uh, our main budget was concerning the refurbishments and upgrades, both um, on, let's say, hardware side and on the uh, software side concerning the control system, but uh, as uh, the, the level of the intermittent uh, renewable sources, dominantly wind, which we have uh, more than 800 megawatt on the grid already now, and 800 in the different phases of the of the projects, and the even larger number, what was mentioned uh, by uh, Ms. Celic, uh, waiting in the pipeline, let's say more or less uh, uh, serious projects. Um, so this enormous uh, pressure on our grid uh, brought us in the situation that uh, uh, we almost exhausted the internal capacities uh, of, uh, of, of our existing infrastructure. And therefore, uh, additional, not only refurbishments and upgrades, but also some new lines uh, are necessary and are planned in the next uh, uh, five to 10 years. And the first, uh, let's say, um, part of, of those projects is uh, also included in this uh, in re uh, reconstruction uh, and resi resilience uh, program already mentioned by Ms. Challenge. And uh, this is the, let's say, uh, the situation uh, in brief uh, concerning the creation transmission grid. So how can HOPS contribute to the green transition? What can you do from your side and, and how can you help the green transition and the, uh, the achievement of, of, of energy efficiency? What, what is your role in, in all of this? How can you help? So, uh, HOPS, as uh, one of uh, EU TSOs, shares also the, uh, the same uh, tasks and, um, and duties as our other colleagues, including also Hungarians from Mavir. Uh, on one hand, to uh, first to keep the lights on, so to uh, um, assure that the society, uh, very reliant on the electricity, is not uh, impacted by any unforeseen uh, effects uh, being uh, the pandemic or weather or climate, uh, let's say, related. And the other hand, also to facilitate uh, the market development. Uh, in this sense, uh, the interconnections and the stable interconnected system uh, even beyond, beyond EU borders is considered to be, uh, let's say, uh, one of the main pillars uh, for uh, large-scale uh, renewable integration in the, all Europe. And this is, of course, one of the uh, main uh, tools to uh, increase this uh, famous uh, goal of climate neutrality. As uh, the energy efficiency uh, perspective, uh, this... Uh, it's of course not neglectable uh, role we have, but it's much more limited than we have it in the integration of renewables. Because uh, especially in the uh, situation what we have in Croatia, for example, where approximately 50% of, of our uh, network losses are related uh, to the transits, to the cross-border transits, which we can not or we may not in 
in, in, um, interfere with because they are a uh, result of the market uh, market uh, participants' uh, transactions uh, in the broader region. Uh, what we can do, what we are doing, uh, are additional investments into the technology or equipment, which has, of course, uh, less, uh, less uh, losses. Uh, this is something that is also in, uh, included in the taxonomy in its, its way, not so uh, famous as the um, energy mix or as the, um, how to say, eligible, eligible uh, energy carriers. Thank you. You've just mentioned the market, and I'd like to uh, go to the topic of market a little bit as well. So how has the uh, liber liberalization of the electricity market affected hops? What, what has changed for you? So uh, liberalization of the market um, is uh, somehow for us uh, more or less an old story, because uh, we are in the... Um, creation uh, market, uh, let's say, set up, um, sharing some uh, market-related uh, functions, market uh, operation-related functions, market organization functions with Hrote. And uh, we are, as the other TSOs, also one of the facilitators of the market. So we are those who are uh, um, creating uh, and developing the infrastructure for market participants uh, to, uh, let's say, to compete among themselves. And uh, so why I'm saying this is quite an old story because uh, for, from, from Hope's side, uh, the market opening uh, definitely happened uh, in the mid of uh, first decade of this century. And especially uh, due to the case uh, of uh, the market, uh, cross-border market integration, which is our uh, dominant role um, in, uh, concerning the creation market. Um, uh, we are cooperating quite closely, not only with our neighbors, but with uh, all of other, uh, not only TSO community in the Europe, but also other uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, so we are, uh, it's part of our, it's part of our, uh, of our main tasks. And uh, the challenges we are facing now are, of course, from the from the new uh, how to say new role of the market, uh, not uh, or liberalized market, open market, whatever you you prefer to use, uh, not being a goal but one of the tools uh, to achieve the climate neutrality. Thank you very much. I would like to know continue with the subject with Mr. Mikulic from uh, uh, Cropex. So uh, uh, Cropex, Cropex uh, here is a very interesting uh, 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 entity as far as the market goes. It's an exchange. So uh, if you could, in short, just explain the role of Cropex in the energy market. Uh, what does Cropex do exactly? How does it function? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so Cropex, the creation power exchange. So we are operating the day ahead and intraday markets for the power power markets. Uh, and uh, our main function and what was the main driver for the establishment is that uh, the power exchange is a tool that is uh, providing a uh, transparent and reliable wholesale pricing of the electricity market. So this is something that needs to be understood that uh, exchange uh, is the only uh, tool that can provide this. Together with the day ahead and intraday market, we are also responsible for the location of the capacity, cross-border capacity for the day ahead segment and intraday segment through the market coupling projects. So uh, uh, creation wholesale market, Cropex day ahead market is connected to the single day ahead and single intraday uh, EU markets. These are single uh, coupling markets. So on the day ahead segment, we are connected to the, to Croatian Slovenian border, and on the intraday segment, we are connected to Croatian Slovenian and Croatian uh, Hungarian border. So these are two main as aspects. Uh, in, in joint with the operation of the markets, we are also uh, part of the development, uh, we're part of the development of the guarantees of origin market in Croatia. So back in 2018, Cropex was one of the pioneers in Europe that we organized the market access to the guarantees of origin together with 
uh, Rote, who was the owner of this uh, Gandis of origin. We developed the uh, market design jointly and uh, the IT systems for uh, selling of these uh, guarantees of origins on market-based principles. And this is a model that is uh, running also up to the, up to today. Uh, with operation of the day-ahead and intraday markets, we are also uh, set up as a CCP or central counterparty for the old trades conducted on the CROPEX. So we are also a clearing house for the spot market exchanges. Uh, these are maybe in short, and also in addition with that, we are also uh, having a cooperation with our TSO hops and the uh, market operator Krote, where we have developed and set up an auction system uh, where we have uh, made a new mo market model where the, our TSO is uh, procuring uh, energy for the losses and uh, our market operator is organizing auctions for selling the electricity from, from the renewable sector from the feed-in system. So uh, in short, these are the main CropEx activities and main our business focus. Uh, how can this uh, role be expanded? Are, are there some uh, ways of, of expanding your role, uh, perhaps expanding also your cooperation with, with others, especially now that we're talking about Hungary, maybe with the Hungarian counterparts? How is this function? Because somebody already mentioned CROPEX and, and the cooperation going on between Hungary and, and Croatia in this respect as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are already having a successful cooperation with our Hungarian colleagues. Uh, this is uh, Mavir on the Hungarian side because uh, uh, together with Mavir, Cropex is responsible for the physical shipment and financial clearing of the cross-border electricity that is straight to this market coupling segment. So we have successful cooperation. Uh, with, this is only on the intraday market segment, but uh, we are jointly part of the core project. This is, an, uh, uh, let's say, a big EU project that uh, will deliver also the day ahead market coupling on the Croatian-Hungarian border, and we are successfully collaborating on expanding these activities on this field. Uh, we are also willing to support our colleagues. So basically, as I mentioned, this guarantees the forage market model that was that is successfully running in Croatia from 2018. This is something that is uh, under development in Hungary, as we are we heard from our colleagues, and they are preparing themselves for the, for the implementation of this uh, of these guarantees of origin model. So, uh, in this sense, we stand at their disposal for any assistance, as we have the experience, the market designs, and also we have the needed IT system and tools that were developed uh, for these purposes. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, uh, uh, let's let's continue with this cooperation uh, topic, which is basically, I think, something that's our last structurally uh, 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 founded topic for this panel. It's cooperation. So I would like to go to Mr. Kovac and, and the LNG terminal. It's a commercial terminal uh, with many different uh, owners of gas in the storages. Uh, my question is, is I guess, somewhat uh, controversial, but in case of a huge shortage of gas, let's say, in, in Croatia, would the LNG terminal, for example, consider, consider suspending uh, deployment of gas to, to other uh, uh, market entities uh, to preserve gas for, for Croatian needs? Well, as you mentioned, it's a totally commercial uh, terminal, so the gas uh, stored inside is actually, or you have the ownership of the our terminal users. We are not in situation to actually suspend or to 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 like the gas from the grid because you know we are only one entry into the transmission system of Republic of Croatia. So our job is uh, primary to actually gas the. The, the volume we have in our tanks and maybe to mention here also you know we have the tanks of 140,000 cubic meter of LNG when we are full this is equivalent of I don't know let's say 80 million of cubic meter so you know with our technical limitation of about the one seven million cubic meter per day you know this is some somehow 12 days of working so we are not. Uh, we don't have a very uh, high impact to actually 
you know, to, 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 to respond to crisis. However, if we continue to receive the carriers, uh, we are more than capable to, to uh, uh, in, introduce this uh, amount of the gas to, into the market for our customers every day. So, when the okay. uh, gas crisis situation, uh, do you know the, the plinac rolls are mentioned, the transmission system operators who actually on the charge, he has the whole system and he knows much more. So from our position, we will definitely do our what we, what we are supposed to do and this is to regasify it and send out the gas into the transmission system. Now, unfortunately, we don't have uh, anyone from Plinacro today, but uh, Mr. Blažević is actually specialized in gas, so I would refer to him from uh, from Croatia's energy company, HEP, to, to answer this question. Uh, uh, now, Hungary has strategic reserves, which are, are government-owned. Uh, many other countries also rely on their strategic reserves, especially when gas is involved. Croatia doesn't seem to have one. So we are completely open in that way. Uh, we are dependent on market movements and the uh, the goodwill of, of market operators. Uh, what's your comment on this? Is, is, is this a wise choice? Is it wise for Croatia not to have an entirely state-run state reserve? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. <clears throat> well, uh, we have to look... Um, a little to give a little overview so hungary has six storages with uh, over eight bcm of capacity so it's really easy to uh, to make a strategic storage uh, let's say two bcm I'm, I'm not sure but i believe it's about two bcm of strategic storage in, in hungary we have only one underground gas storage in okoli which is 0.5 bcm uh, with also limited withdrawal capacity so withdrawal capacity from that storage is five million cubic meters a day plus minus of course, depending on the volume of stored gas. Uh, we had the regulation, and when we had the regulation with the whole, the whole wholesale gas supplier, and when the gas uh, storage was not fully um, com uh, commercialized, uh, so uh, there were obligation of having 90% of the booked storage filled. So by the 1st of the November, uh, night, you, you must. If, if you were um, supplying uh, public uh, service customers, you needed to have at least ninety percent on the first of the November because of the curve of the uh, storage. So as uh, as as the curve goes down, the withdrawal capacity also goes down. So you can withdraw about one hundred percent until the storage is about fifty percent full. After that, the uh, withdrawal curve is falling falling down. So having this. Uh, in mind, we have even uh, lower capacity than Mr. Kovac said from the from the terminal. So they they would run out of gas in about 12 days. Uh, we wouldn't go uh, so so fast, but with this maximum uh, with the draw rate of about five million uh, per day, I don't see that enough of covering the peak shaving or is some uh, really really st st strong uh, strong winter. Uh, also, uh, we needed to do that, so move from the regulated uh, approach uh, because of the uh, decree from the European Commission, which we, which we had. So, uh, because of the third energy package and changing the changing the law, so that that was some of the conditions uh, for our country to remove uh, that uh, obligation uh, or a regulated approach to the uh, storage capacity, and it was it was given fully on a commercial commercial basis this year, uh, first time on an auction auction based um, uh, 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 booking was on uh, auctions. So this was this is for the first time um, done on the Okoli uh, underground gas storage. The other gas storage uh, we are considering is in Grubišno Polje. Uh, which is a smaller, smaller storage unit, about 100 to 150 mi uh, million cubic, uh, cubic meters, but with a huge withdrawal capacity. So uh, that storage could be uh, filled and withdrawn in about two weeks to two to, 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 to three weeks, and that would be really crucial to have some something like that because winter use, usually when it comes, it comes in some shorter periods. It's not like that; it's three or four months um, below zero, but we have some periods of two to three weeks. And I believe uh, that Grubišno Polje underground gas storage would be crucial uh, to have and may maybe consider that as, as a st strategic because of the uh, huge uh, withdrawal um, potential. Thank you very much for your answer. Now, uh, uh, 
continuing on the topic of, of, of cooperation between Hungary and Croatia, I would like to go to Mrs. Celic and uh, uh, talk about uh, the nuclear plant in, in, in Hungary, Pox, as they call it, so Pox. Uh, two, uh, Hungary is investing in, in, in expanding the capacity over there. Uh, and Minister Choric in Croatia mentioned that uh, uh, Croatia would be interested in, in maybe cooperating with Hungary in that respect. So can, you, so can you tell us more about what is the thinking in the Ministry of, of, of Economy and, and, and Energy uh, when it comes to, to the nuclear, nuclear power plant in, in Hungary? Um, well, I think that Minister Choric was uh, clear in his statement, so I will not explain it. And uh, what I would like to, to say, uh, I would like to speak about security of supply. And uh, if you are asking me about nuclear in depth uh, way on the technical level, nuclear is stable uh, uh, a source of electricity. And if we are uh, transforming our uh, uh, sectors, that means European sectors, electricity sectors, to use more electricity also in uh, in uh, in the other uh, elect uh, in heating and cooling, and also in the mobile sector, then we will need that stable production definitely. But uh, I would like to, 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 to refer to this gas storaging and uh, strategic uh, storages and uh, uh, strategic reserves. Uh, according to EU standards and obligation, the, um, each country need to uh, have 90 days reserves of oil and, uh, uh, and oil derivatives, in oil and oil derivatives. Um, we manage that and uh, we have now our hydrocarbon agency who is taking care, care about this, uh, this uh, uh, stock, uh, strategic stock reserves. But the same, uh, same thing is not in the gas sector. So in the gas sector, the, uh, the, the um, count, uh, countries are um, uh, obliged to think about uh, infrastructure and to, to have an arrangement between themselves, how it will work in the, in the if some of crisis occur. So this is, uh, 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 this is, uh, let's say on the level, common level on European Commission. And, but yes, of course, the country uh, could decide to have a, a, a strategic stops also on gas, but it is uh, necessary to have an infrastructure, as, as Mr. Blaser said. In our case, uh, uh, what is very important that is, is important that we draw and uh, uh, and uh, the the quantities of gas in the su such some uh, situation, but because of stability of, of gas system, and in that respect, the the the, uh, the LNG terminal increased a lot. Not uh, this this as as a, a new income of gas in the in the system. Again, not only in Croatia, but also in the region. So this is this is how it looks like. It is not so easy to you know to put uh, to to put this uh, question of yes or no. So this is this is uh, this is much more uh, uh, more 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 sophisticated, like say uh, structure. And yes, in this case, we need to cooperate together. And this is uh, at uh, at most of importance in the crisis situation. So yes, we are uh, on, on this, uh, not only today, but also in the past, we are also, uh, we have also very, very good cooperation, not so on the companies, Hungarian companies, but also in, in, um, uh, in on, the, on the political level. And uh, we exchange our views of security of supply and uh, we are increasing our, Systems that is it is mentioned uh, bif uh, bidirectionally flow on gas. Uh, uh, we uh, we, uh, we also also um, uh, one big compressor uh, sorry uh, an infrastructure of power which was need uh, needed to secure supply in Croatia and uh, uh, for the other countries. So uh, we uh, we really. Uh, 
uh, done a lot for increasing security of supply in the recent years. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Steiner, now uh, it's clear that Hungary is uh, definitely betting on nuclear, even though the uh, European taxonomy is not done yet, and there's still debate about nuclear power and, uh, and gas. Uh, what would happen if, if the Commission and the EU uh, decided to not approve nuclear energy or, or, or gas as completely green? Uh, uh, would you then backtrack with your project of, of, of uh, further expanding POCS or, or what would you do in that case? I imagine there would be a lot of pressure towards Hungary if, if that were to happen. Fortunately, we are not at this stage. And... Uh, Currently, what we are uh, talking about, this is whether nuclear technology can be considered uh, as a sustainable technology which contributes to climate neutrality. And this is what uh, taxonomy is about. And here, as I mentioned, I'm quite optimistic that there will be a positive uh, decision from the Commission's side. Uh, yes, nuclear is not green, but a low carbon. And I think here, we, ha we have to decide whether we opt for technology neutrality or we would like to opt for certain technologies. And uh, we believe that technology neutrality is very important. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, there should be a healthy competition between, between different uh, technologies. And clearly, without nuclear, I see very low chances for Europe to, to reach uh, climate neutrality. And... Uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, several member states have uh, different opinions on that, but of course, the starting point and uh, geographic conditions and, uh, and energy mix is very different, member state by member state, but uh, it's also anchored in the European legislation that uh, each member state can uh, select its energy mix. And I think this is a very important point. To change that rule, that would need a unanimity decision from countries. And, uh, and I, I do not see a re realistic chance to, to change, change that principle. So therefore, I think we have fairly good chances that uh, we will have all of the opportunities to uh, have nuclear in our energy mix, which is inevitable from supply security, but also from price and from sustainability. Uh, perspective, since unfortunately Hungary is a, not a resource-rich uh, uh, country, uh, and and therefore we need we need nuclear. So we are quite determined uh, to continue the project. Um, we are in the middle of uh, of uh, the preparatory phase. So basically, we are finalizing now the permitting uh, of, of the construction permit. Of, of the power plant and after getting that, uh, the real construction uh, can start. Uh, now the supporting facilities are built uh, uh, on, the, on the site, but of course the big construction uh, can only be started after having the construction permit for the facility. Uh, and uh, so the Commissioning the plan commissioning is 2029-2030. There is a shift in, uh, between the two blocks, uh, and I'm quite opti optimistic that we can uh, keep that deadline. Uh, and I think that will be very important for us to commission the new blocks as soon as uh, possible, due to the reasons which I explained before. What do you see uh, Croatia's role now? This was basically the question that I asked uh, Ms. Celic before. Uh, 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 do you see Croatia participating in this in any way? Uh, any specific plans? Or is it just a general uh, expression of interest, so to speak, from Croatia's side? Uh, you know, we have also certain obligations, what to do with the electricity, which will be produced by Pax2 and uh, in the... Uh, competition approval of the European Commission, it's uh, said that uh, at least 30% of the produced electricity shall be, shall be sold on the stock exchange. So actually it will be like a regular uh, market operator uh, selling um, electricity uh, and of course uh, uh, aiming to have as high utilization rate as, as possible. 
uh, these blocks uh, uh, will uh, be able to um, have some maneuvering uh, um, uh, capabilities also, but of course not as quick as in case of uh, uh, gas-fired uh, power plants. And they are very open uh, to have uh, any negotiations with uh, with Croatian colleagues uh, on, on 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 that issue. Uh, you know, nuclear facilities and nuclear safety is always a very crucial point. And of course, we would like to have the highest level of nuclear safety. We have uh, uh, the necessary legislation already in place for that, and also the we have the nuclear authority uh, with huge experiences in nuclear safety. So I think uh, safety first, uh, this is very important, but after that it will be as, as a normal commercial operation of, 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 of power plants. But we are very open for any, any talks and any negotiations on that. Very much. Uh, Mr. Bekefi, just to, to sort of wrap up this, this topic of, of cooperation between uh, uh, Croatia and Hungary, uh, OTP is in a very good position because it's a Hungarian bank, it's, it's HQ in, in Hungary, but it's also very present in, in Croatia. So uh, what can OTP do to, to facilitate better, better uh, cooperation between Hungary and Croatia, at least in this financial uh, respect? Uh, <clears throat> as Mr. Steiner mentioned at the beginning, it is very important to mo mo mobilize the funds and become uh, climate neutral. And OTP is an extremely good position because uh, we operate in 11 countries and uh, 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 fortunately we are the fastest growing Central and Eastern European banking group. Uh, in the energy sector, there are numerous uh, in initiatives, uh, not only in Croatia and, uh, and Hungary, but in all, uh, all, all around the region. And we are uh, here to understand the project and we understand those initiatives and to, uh, to financially uh, support all projects, collaborations, companies who develop climate worthy solution. Many of our large corporate clients uh, are also operating in, in regional uh, markets and, and, and it always makes sense to use a synergy with the same uh, same financial uh, partner. We are keeping an eye on the developments, but here it is extremely important to have uh, discussions, uh, discussions like this between the two countries, but also discussions with the regulators, because uh, uh, from financial po point of view, it is uh, the financial regulators, meaning the national banks who are playing an extremely important role. And uh, only recently, uh, uh, I have been on a um, roundtable panel where it was mentioned that, uh, by the Croatian National Bank that this is a huge journey, and we are only at the at the, uh, the beginning. So it, uh, I think, all around this roundtable, and also, and when it comes to the regulators, uh, all of us bear extremely large responsibility for uh, uh, for for making those. Uh, climate neutral in investments happen and uh, we are as a bank are here to have those in the intense discussions and to support each and every partner each and every stakeholder in this in this road so conversation like this today is extremely appreciated Thank you very much now you've mentioned regulation and so, so i have a question from mr mr pehar from hrote which who is probably best placed to, to give us some information on this. So uh, what is your feeling, Mr. Pehar? Uh, is Croatia's legislative framework adequate at this point uh, for all these challenges that we're facing now and in the near future? Uh, could there be any improvements, any, any, any changes, welcome changes to the regulatory uh, framework? Well, we already have a new electricity uh, market law that was enacted a month ago that is fully in line with the winter package. We are expecting the law on the renewables uh, to be enacted by the end of this year. Uh, we have COPEX that is a power exchange that is connected on the decade and interday level to the European Union. Uh, there are already 21 active traders on the wholesale market in Croatia. Most of them are active also on the COPEX. Uh, well, it, it, is, it has already been said, uh, there are auctions held by the system operators for the losses. We are holding auctions for the renewable energy 
sources uh, that, are, uh, that are in the feeding system and we are selling on the open market. So I think that the, our market, or this market is developed as any European market can be. Uh, also, uh, Cropex is, uh, is uh, uh, there are plans to index the Cropex futures on the Austrian power exchange so that uh, derivatives are also covered. And uh, the only challenge is also the new autistic market law uh, recognizes presumers uh, fully and is enabling uh, direct access of the final customers to the market. So basically the new autistic market act puts the consumers at the center of the autistic market and enables them to buy electricity directly uh, on the market. And the only challenge I see is uh, supplier switching. The rate of the supplier switching is still low uh, close to 90% of all the households are still on the last resort supplier, which is HEP Electra. So there is definitely room to improve that. And you can improve it by educating the final consumers about their rights on the electricity market and especially regarding the suppliers. And I think the consumers will have a much needed role in the future, not only by producing the electricity, but also providing the much needed flexibility on the electricity market due to the high risk penetration. The answer. Uh, now, you you said just just to make sure you are uh, more or less uh, satisfied with how developed the market is at this point. You you would say that this is optimal for us. Well, uh, optimal. Well, it's uh, it's really good at the moment. Uh, we will see what challenges lie ahead with the prosumers and the impact of the increased renewable energy production. Uh, but at the moment, it's. Yet it's, it's developed and it's connected to the European uh, market, so there's, I don't think there's uh, much room for improvement there. Uh, as far as, uh, as prosumers go, I would like to go to Mr. Mikulic from, uh, from Cropex now. Uh, do you see prosumers, so-called produ producers and consumers, uh, um, entering the exchange, will, will, do you see them being a factor in the exchange, uh, uh, energy exchange in Croatia in the future? Uh, of course, we as exchange, we welcome any, uh, any, anybody interested in obtaining the mark, participating in the market and obtaining, especially that now we have the, both the day ahead market and the intraday market, so we have a potential you can trade 30 minutes up to the delivery where you can really optimize your portfolio and really up, be up to, up to date. Uh, so basically we, we are welcoming this and also as Luca mentioned, uh, if they have a market access, uh, this would be a, a great shift for them. Of course, uh, it's much easier to enter the market on the, let's say, relaxed opinion when the price are not as high as such. So uh, maybe in this near future, due to these market conditions, um, maybe uh, I, I fear that a lot of people will rather uh, step back from this uh, market access at this point and let's, uh, let's say leave it to the professionals and not to risk because the stakes are relatively high, high at this time, at this moment. But uh, of course, we are welcoming anything, uh, any participant, any uh, point to expand this market and also to make it more early and more transparent. The market has been uh, uh, opening more and more in, in Croatia as far as energy is concerned. Um, do you see, that we also have a new law that was passed fairly recently. Do you expect more activity on the exchange uh, and the more diverse clientele coming in, in the near future maybe? Uh, Maybe there will be some more activity, but not significant. Uh, the wholesale market was opened uh, from the beginning, uh, as it was mentioned previously in the conversation. The Cropex is a point we are operating on the wholesale market, where the energy companies who have licenses from the regulator can uh, trade energy, exchange energy. So uh, this field and these market participants are really limited, and there is not much that someone can come suddenly. So we don't. Uh, expect any significant improvements, but it could definitely make an uh, improvement in uh, uh, bringing the market closer to the end consumers and uh, prosumers and especially these high prices that are not really favorable for anyone, but they can be favorable for numerous projects as we mentioned and we heard from the 
colleagues from the OTP bank when they are looking through the financing sector and everything. Uh, two or three years ago, any project is different than when you review it now with current prices. So it is interesting times ahead of us, definitely. Very much. Now, uh, I've held you here for quite a long time. I commend you on your patience and your concentration. I've uh, more or less gone through most of the the important questions and, and the general topics that I had in mind and that you saw. So uh, at this point, I would wrap this up. I think we've, we've spoken fairly enough. Uh, I would invite uh, maybe Mr. Steiner from... Uh, Hungary's ministry and uh, Mrs. Celic from uh, Croatia's ministry to maybe give us some sort of wrap up uh, a conclusion if they will, if they want to, uh, of this panel. Uh, some takeaways, as the Americans like to say. So, Mrs. Mr. Steiner, if you if you want to close up. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think from also from that discussion, it became quite clear that uh, how complex. Uh, this question is and what is the scale of this uh, challenge uh, which is ahead of us and I think it's also clear that uh, uh, regional cooperation is a key uh, to be able to uh, uh, meet uh, those goals which are now shared among EU member states and I think uh, it's good news that uh, we have made a lot of progress uh, in the last decade in several fields, but we cannot uh, lay, lay, uh, lay uh, behind and rest. And uh, I think we should also identify whether there are also new fields uh, where we have to cooperate also quite intensively. Here we talked about network networks, especially electricity network, which will be a crucial, critical infrastructure even more in the future due to the deployment of renewables and, uh, and uh, of course, financing. Uh, I think uh, careful planning is very important in terms of financing and uh, to mobilize EU funds, national funds, but also the private uh, capital and how you, you coordinate uh, among, among those uh, financial streams. This will be extremely important and I think we uh, need also uh, uh, have more focus on, on that. Um, I think to exploit the potential in existing in infrastructure, uh, that will be a, a important task uh, to, to uh, exploit the capacities of existing assets, but also to think about how to utilize the existing assets for new technologies. Uh, this will be a crucial a new field, and of course, uh, uh, the consumers were mentioned, and and of course, the consumers are the most important because that's the aim of the whole uh, energy market to serve consumers. And here, here, uh, I think uh, the the prosumers, consumers role that will make very significant shifts uh, in the in the market, and there will be also new business opportunities uh, uh, on the market. Uh, for example, energy communities, uh, I think that will play a crucial crucial role of, of that. So I'm very open for any uh, potential cooperation, uh, also in the future, with Croatian parties. Uh, and I think uh, there are some uh, good opportunities, especially in field of hydrogen, uh, of course, uh, infrastructure coordination and, and cooperation, uh, we should continue on, on the, that track, but there is a big openness from our side to, to coordinate with you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. And Ms. Celic, any final thoughts before, wrap, before we well, wrap this up? Uh, the same as my uh, colleague said, uh, we, we are really thinking on this transition hard and we are uh, working on, on different issue, issues that we need to have to, to manage it. But, but I would underline again this, our transmission and distribution systems, uh, electricity systems and our cooperation on, on this uh, electricity market, market, which is first and cru crucial for, for uh, 
uh, for development on 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 this this new uh, CO two free uh, economy. Uh, so what 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 uh, if if we would like to see to see this we need to have uh, smart uh, metering smart ideas uh, uh, di di digitalized systems and uh, to have uh, uh, we have the, here a great opportunity for uh, cooperation and also we need it so uh, uh, we uh, in Croatia, we will. Uh, I I hope we will with the, this uh, EU funds. We will speed up with the process of of transforming our electricity system in uh, in CO two free and electricity. First of all, we are expecting that CO electricity will be low carbon, including uh, production from nuclear power, which which we are which we have it a part in Slovenia. Uh, that that means and in high efficiency generation. That means again, I, I would I underline we, we do not uh, uh, we uh, we need to to use all available technologies. We need to develop uh, infrastructure, and we need to think about security of supply uh, of our countries. And in the future, we will uh, as as well as as, uh, as until now cooperate on these subjects. Oh, I thank you all for participating. I hope it was uh, useful for you. I hope it was constructive for you. And I hope we meet live at some point, maybe when all this craziness goes away. Uh, thank you again for participating and uh, you're free to go. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye